And congratulations once again to Michelle. Uh, right now, our next presenter, by the way, round of applause for Michelle. Our next presenter serves as um, Goldman Sachs Chief of Staff, also Secretary of the firm's Board of Directors, and a member of the, for, uh, the firm's Management Committee. He also previously held positions at the State Department, U.S. Treasury, also the White House. And so we are honored to have him with us this morning. Please welcome John Rogers. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored to be here with such a distinguished group of honorees and to listen for the first time to Michelle's story and to be with a room with Matt Winkler, a pioneer in financial journalism, and of course my friend Ambassador Revere, who I had the great honor of being misidentified recently in a photograph in a social magazine as Milan's husband. And, and, and for that fleeting moment, I knew that Philip, what it meant to be with someone that's so dynamic. And we'll hear about that later. Um, tonight, however, I'm here to honor my colleague, Edith Cooper, on this very special occasion. And over the course of her career at Goldman Sachs, Edith's accomplishments have distinguished her as one of the most respected and influential leaders at our firm. I met Edith when she joined Goldman Sachs to build and lead our energy sales group in New York. And there were, at first blush, the more obvious traits. Her wit, her intelligence, her character, and the way she carried herself. Taken together, the characteristics of a natural leader. And more than that, however, there was a special energy about her. And from that moment, I knew that I wanted, no, I, I knew that I needed to have Edith a part of my life. As time would tell, however, I was not the only one who recognized these qualities, evidenced soon by her elevated standing among her peers and her measured rise through the firm's leadership ranks to her current standing on the firm's management committee. And during her time in the firm, Edith has served as co-head of our commodities business in Europe and Asia, based in London, and held responsibilities in leading our futures business here in New York. And today, as the global head of our human capital management, and like her predecessor, she brings the experience and the credibility of running a revenue business to her responsibilities overseeing the people side of the firm. And when I thought about her being honored tonight and how best to capture the essence of Edith Cooper, I kept returning to one of my favorite paintings, and it hangs in the National Gallery of Art. It's by Jan Vermeer, entitled Woman Holding a Balance. It's a very, very small painting. It's only 15 by 17 inches. And in it, we see what appears to be an everyday scene Vermeer used to paint so often, a woman in a room busy with her everyday work. She stands at a table surrounded by various ornaments and novelties. She faces a framed mirror, yet she ignores all of these things. Light flows from a window, accentuating first a sleeve and then a hand and then a scale that she holds between her three fingers. And when we take a closer look, we can see that there's nothing in the pans of that scale. They are empty, but for light itself. And much of the significance of this painting depends, like any painting, upon the emotions and the experiences of the viewer. But one may find within the painting's central message of balance a place for the full weight of service to others. Some would say the fullest recognition of service comes from what achievements we help to bring out in those around us. And every day, Edith is a reminder, the measure of one's life comes in the decisions we weigh and the choices we make. She teaches us that we ourselves fill the pans each day. And in so doing, we must balance a focused personal drive with a grounded perspective, balance a strong sense of self with the need to serve others, and balance 
what we can accomplish in our daily lives with what we will be, and the final summary, our life's commitment. I can think of no greater contribution to the advancement and the empowerment of girls and women than the message that she sends and her ability to reconcile these elements, which in confluence can lead to more fulfilling lives. That is her gift. Edith is indeed planting the seed for future women leaders by what she has accomplished, but more importantly, she is doing so by whom she chooses to be. Please join me in honoring my colleague, Edith Cooper.